Hi, it's the month of February and at this time of year long-tailed tits start to build their nests. They're very early nesters and it's a very easy nest to find as well. If you walk along a hedgerow like this you'll come across long-tailed tits and if they start to call at you and they make this constant contact call you soon pick up the sound of it and as you walk along you hear a pair of them calling you sort of follow them. Whichever direction they go in, you just follow them along. As you get close to where they're building the nest, the sound of those contact calls increases. They're agitated a little bit because you're there. And it's like playing hot and cold. The closer you get to the nest, the more they call. And as you go past the nest and walk away from it, they call less at you. So you know they're in this vicinity. And then it's not that difficult to spot it as well especially when you've got one of these thermal images. It's not that difficult a nest to find, especially at this time of year, because there's no leaves on the hedgerow. And it's, it's quite a large thing, it's, it's quite bulky, so you would be able to find it, but with this it just makes it so much easier. I scanned that hedgerow in the area where the birds were calling the most and straight away I could see this large heat source and then you could see the birds come along the hedge which you, you couldn't see with the binoculars but you can see them through this inside that thicket and you can see the birds heading towards it and going inside it. Now I mentioned in the previous film that when I had the thermal imager that attached to my mobile phone I could walk along and scan the hedge as I walked whereas this you can't really walk with this up against your eye it's not very practical but apparently you can buy a bracket for this and that bracket sticks out and that will hold your mobile phone next to your viewer and then there's an app that connects the two so then you could walk about with this without having to look at the viewfinder all the time you'd be looking at your mobile phone and scanning now i would like to film these long-tailed tits building their nest it's already 90 percent complete they've only got to put the roof on it and it has like a, a side entrance to it so I'm going to do this by remote control and I'm going to use a DJI Action 4 to do it. It's such a tiny little camera. I haven't had this very long. I've had a number of GoPros over the years, but I'm getting very frustrated with GoPros. They, they're a bit temperamental. They play up too much for me. So I've been trying this. I've only got one battery for this. I've got four batteries for my GoPro, which I, I could swap over to that in a minute. But anyway, we're going to start off with this. And... It's such a small camera, which is going to make it easier for me to get in position because it's right in the middle of this thicket and it's full of thorns. I'm going to get scratched to death doing this. If I use a tripod, I've got the problem of getting all three legs of the tripod in position. So I'm going to use a lighting stand, a single upright in it. And all I've got to do, if I can get the base onto the floor underneath the thicket, then I can just keep going up and up and up into the air just pushing it through the thicket until it's high enough now unfortunately this is not as tall as i'd like it to be so what i've also got to do i've got a selfie stick and i've got to put the selfie stick on top of it and this i'm just going to attach with some tape very crudely once this is in place i've got plenty of height then far more height than i really need So I'm going to slide it in there without the camera on top because it's going to get knocked about quite a bit as it goes up. But once it's up, I've then got to lean in and put the camera on top of here. But the DJI, DJI has a quick release mechanism, so it should go on very easily, I hope. Now, the other thing to be aware of is on the front of this camera, you've got a screen. So as when you're filming yourself, you can see what you're doing. Now, I can turn that off. I, I know where that is in the settings. That will go off after three seconds. But that red light that's flashing, yeah, it's flashing at the moment. I can't stop that happening. So I'm just going to cover that over with a bit of tape. I don't think it will make any difference, but just a little red light flashing might be a bit strange for the birds.
So that will do it. I'm now going to put the DJI on top of there. Again, I'm going to get more scratches. I'm already bleeding all over my hands. And before I do that, I'm going to power it up and power up my mobile phone as well because there's an app that comes with this it connects to your mobile phone and it's one of these devices that so far connects first time every time not all devices do that but this one's been very reliable up to now once it's connected to my phone i can change all of the settings in here in fact it's easier to change the settings from your mobile phone than to change them on the back and not only that but i can see the picture i'm taking on the mobile and when the bird comes in i can press the record button and start the video and stop the video so I'll just connect that and then put this into position. So now I just have to sit here on my stool and wait for the birds to come in. Now I have to stay within Bluetooth range of the camera, which is about 10 meters. But from the bird point of view, I could be a lot closer. They will take no notice of me. They're not interested in me. And I don't have to keep staring at the mobile phone because I will know when the birds are coming, they make this constant noise. So as soon as I hear them and they're getting close, I just pick up the camera and press the record button. There's no focus on these cameras. It focuses from infinity down to about that distance. And there is a digital zoom. And I've put the digital zoom onto two times. And that's because it's a very much a wide angle lens on it. And it makes the birds too small in the frame unless I, I do that, even though the camera is only about that distance from them. So the birds will take no notice of the camera. I've done this many times before. In fact, they might even land on it and use it as a perch. Whether I'm going to be happy with the quality I'm getting from the DJI, I'm not certain. It would be the same quality as the GoPro, but I think I would prefer to get a proper camera in there, the Lumix G9. But I'm going to start off because it's, it's difficult to get in there. And can I get the G9 on top of that rather flimsy lighting pole? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Let's get the birds coming in and take the first bit of footage first. Of British bird nests, this has got to be one of the most wonderful. It's a fantastic structure. It's made up of lichens and moss, spider's webs. How do you collect spider's webs? And then it's finally lined with feathers, up to one and a half thousand feathers. You can see here the bird is not even looking at the camera. It's just oblivious to it. It's so busy getting on with its work. They can actually build these nests very quickly but usually they don't because they've got lots of time so long as they start early enough. But if something was to happen to this nest and they needed to rebuild, it's amazing how quickly they can actually do it. As I'm looking at this footage, I feel I would like to be a little bit closer. They should be larger in the frame so we can see what's going on. And also, it'd be nice to slow it down. So that was very easy. The birds came in, took absolutely no notice of me. Now I want to change to slow motion. And there I've hit a problem. Very easy to change on the mobile. I've changed it to slow motion but I lose the two times digital zoom. So now the nest is a bit small in the frame. This is where the Lumix will come in, I think. If I put the Lumix on, this is just a 12 to 40 mil lens. So in terms of a, a full frame, it's the equivalent of a 24 to 80 mil. It's gonna be, I'll actually bring it back a little bit from the nest, it'll be further back. Just, it's a bit heavy to balance on top of that rather flimsy device. But once it's in position, it's not as if I've got to move it, it's just going to stay there. I'm going to carry on with this for a little while, but I suspect I'm going to have to change over. And I think the image quality should be superior as well. So still at normal speed here, but I pushed the camera just a little bit higher. So we're looking down at the entrance hole on top of the nest. Thank you. 
when the bird goes down like this you can see how elastic the nest is it stretches and when they've got young birds in there then as they grow bigger the sort of nest expands with the growing youngsters And now we're looking in slow motion, about five times slow, but the nest is so small in the frame. We can't really see what's going on. So I abandon the DJI Action 4, and with a little bit of effort, I managed to get the Lumix in place. You can see the image quality is a lot better. And in slow motion, you'll be able to start to see what the bird is doing. And the light is good at the moment too, it's overcast lighting. When you're in a hedgerow like this, that's very important. You don't want the sun shining, you get contrast as the shafts of light come through the hedge. Overcast is much better. How can this bird build this nest just using its bill? I couldn't do it with two hands and ten fingers and thumbs. And it seems to be threading things around that branch. They are so clever. As ever, you need slow motion to be able to see this. And even then, it's a bit difficult to make out exactly what's happening. Thanks for watching.